took me almost four years, but here we are, my second tutorial for Course 6 Mode Studio. So today we will learn how to import a unit from another mode as well as the steps to make a unit playable by a human user. The links to Core 6 Mode Studio as well as file format editor are provided at the end of the description. For the purpose of this tutorial we will implement the Guardsman Codex model which is available in a few no four modes. The extract part is required because the model was stored in an SGA archive in this mode. Most modes will have the files extracted but I wanted to show how files can be easily extracted from the SGA archives. This might be useful in case you want to edit something from the default game like textures and such. You can simply copy the, the WHM and WHE and possible the, possibly the lure file of the model. Check the required textures used by the model. You can use file format edit FFI2 for short. SSHR sections have the paths for most usually all the textures used by a model. Some textures might exist in the game, like the strategic point textures, and so are not required. As you can see, the strategic point texture is already in the mood I was making because it was already in the default key. So I will check the remaining textures and extract them as required. The RSH files are the default textures without team colors applied, and the WTP define how the team color is applied to the texture. The RTX, which I didn't copy, are meant to for specific color schemes like those used in the campaign or when you disable team colors in skirmish. Since we only we are only going to be Using this in test, we only copy the RSH and the WTP for each of the textures. I won't really copy uh, those because I already have them in my mode, so they will not be required. After dealing with the textures required, the next step is to check the implementation made on the mode you got the model from. It's not always good to follow what was made by others, but for a starter point, it's always good practice. We can always change what we make of the unit later on, so there's no major issue. This implementation has three art points uh, coded. The first is the ranged weapons, the second is the melee weapons, and the third is a carapace cur upgrade for the guards, basically armor upgrade. Now we create uh, a new EPPS based on a copy of a similar unit. I will be basing my new guardsman from the default guardsman. It's always a good practice to start with something very similar if it is 
light infantry you should start with a light infantry unit if it is a vehicle you should start with a vehicle S most things will be kept especially in initial phase in the initial phase of the implementation so it is a good practice to use something very simple now you can check the weapons that were already implemented and those that we need to implement we don't have a flamer so I will Add the flamer. We also didn't have a melt a weapon, so we will add that as well. Keep in mind that with different models, the names for the the weapons might change, so you have to be careful not to keep. A different uh, name for the weapon in different models. In this case, they are the same, but they might not be. I will create new new weapons from similar ones. I will get the scout flamer to make a flamer for the guardsman and a melt uh, weapon from. Sisters of Battle to make the melt weapon for the guardsmen as well. It is always good because they already have similar stats to what we will want in the end result, so it's a good starting point. Anything we need to change later, like requirements and stats, can be always changed as, as long as. Uh, we have what as long as we as we need it to uh the next thing we will do is to change the actual requirements for the weapons because they will uh, they will have requirements related to their original race so we have to change the, these requirements for them to be used again Usually you will check the correct muzzle and origin from the actual muzzle, but without access to that, just use what was used by others and it's just as required. The worst thing it can happen is the, the projectile being fired from the, in an incorrect location. Uh, with, some, with some effects it still will not be noticeable. With projectiles like my, uh, missiles and plasma projectiles, it might be more easy to notice. Changing requirements is the same for resources, weapons, entities and squads. So if you learn how to do it now, you will be able to edit all these types of files without issues.
now we can check the WHE for the weapons check on the clauses if there is another, any other weapon that we might need to implement or might want to implement we have the last gun, the grenade launcher the, melee, the default melee weapon which is already implemented the plasma gun you can see that the name of the melee weapon is the same as we have on the WHE We also have an Elta gun. Flamer is down there. And we have Carapass armor upgrade and an additional ranged weapon, which is the sniper rifle. The original model didn't implement the sniper rifle. We will not implement it as well because it would be the fifth uh, weapon upgrade and so it would not be noticeable in game. I copied the name so you could implement it later. You would just have to add the weapon file for the stats and it would work with the additional muzzle in origin correction. I will implement the Carpass armor upgrade. I will leave it just as a visual upgrade, not not the stats change, so we will keep the same weapon for both both status. Only the visual will be different. You can see that the names all match with what is written on the clause. I added the modifier section to the entity to allow the Carapass armor upgrade to appear randomly for testing purpose. What you should see in game is that slightly above or below 50% of the of the units will have Carapass armor because I put a probability of 0 0.5. Uh, it might not be exactly 50%, sometimes it will be 20, 80, 80, 20, depends. Now we create the squad for the, the new unit and add it to the infantry command. I will replace the previous guardsman with this version of the guardsman they, uh, this way we will we'll have from the HQ the default guardsman and from the infantry command the codex guardsman all that remains now is to change the trooper base in the squad to the correct one could also add the, the entity to the race PPs so it is noticeable in the game uh, we also could check the, the logs to see if there is anything missing from uh, our implementation any texture or sound sounds are better detected while you play and just check the, the sound uh, log afterwards for any, any other stuff you can check the warnings log when you play in dev mode. For more details about playing in dev mode check the description below. Thank you and we shall see you next time.